So recently, a report came out by Policy Exchange, a think tank, where they researched and gathered information surrounding knife crime in the capital and quote how gangs are drawing another generation into a life of violent crime. The report itself is roughly 63 pages long. I've personally read through the whole thing and I wanted to highlight some information that has came from this report. If you do wish to read the whole report by the way I will leave it linked down in the description below. Again feel free to go and give that one a read. But again the report is in relation to knife crime in the capital and it focuses on a few key elements but one reoccurring theme is drill music's relationship with knife crime. It does highlight various different topics in detail which I won't be going over but the full report again is linked down in the description if you want to go over those extra points because I'm mainly focusing on the drill music side of things I'll be referencing the independence article that they wrote on it and later I'll be going over some statistics from the report which we as the general public don't really get to see and I'll tell you why that is when we talk about it so the independent have recently reported quote one in three gangland murders in London linked to drill music report finds one in three London homicides in 2018 was linked to drill music, a policy exchange report has found. The report analyzes a decade of knife crime data pointing to the role of drill music, social media, revenge attacks, and a failure of police strategy in the rise of gang violence. Analysis by Policy Exchange found that of the 41 gang-related homicides in 2018, drill music played a role in at least one third of them, or 36.5%. This was where either the victim or perpetrator was an aspiring drill rapper or drill music videos were used as evidence in the trial. This figure was 23% in 2019. Knife crime reached its highest level of the decade in 2019 as 44 knife offences were committed a day with 94 fatal stabbing victims. Additionally, at least 25% of cases in 2018 and 2019 are directly linked to retaliation, the report says. In response to drill music being linked to stabbings and violence in the capital, rapper Akala previously spoke to The Independent and said that these claims were juvenile. He went on to say, quote, The idea that teenagers will just listen to a drill track and say, right, I'm going to kill someone, like there are no pre-existing problems. Rap is never blamed for kids staying in school and studying. Adding, I stayed in school partly because of Wu-Tang Clan. If it's influential, it's all influential or none of it is. My problem is the hypocrisy of it. The whole thing is tired and the conversation always focuses on the black guy in front of the camera. Let's have the bigger discussion of why we only think it's a problem if certain people do what they have to do to get rich. Talking of the stats in my own opinion though, it's obvious that gang related murders nowadays are going to be linked to drill music because Every gang seemingly has a rapper in there. Even gangs who are known for their secrecy we've seen have a rapper or two. One gang that comes to mind would be Marley Strip. So when these numbers come out, it's not surprising, but take away the music, the gang-related murders are still going to be there. Has there been situations in where music has made it worse? I'd personally say yes, but you'd be silly to think that removing music would automatically stop these beefs and unfortunately people dying. What isn't in the news though and what I find interesting is that the report has a number of policy recommendations. One of them is asking for school boards, yes school boards, to be removed off the internet for good. So that means all you school board makers could soon have all your content wiped offline and this is in reference to the current draft of the online safety bill. The online safety bill is something that could come into place in the future which if passed will stop potentially harmful content. This think tank is telling the government to add school boards and gang related content on there which means in turn even drill could be deemed as internet fraud as they're putting it if this bill goes through because it's going to be classed as potentially harmful content. Going over some more stats from the report and something I wanted to point out was that it said in 2019-2020 
there was at least one stabbing victim per day. This doesn't mean they died from their injuries, but I thought it was interesting to point it out, seeing as the report I went over the other week talking about knife gangs breaking into hospitals to finish off their victims, the doctor did say that there was at least one victim per day. Now, this is just teenagers, the report doesn't talk of adults, so I'm guessing that number is much higher, with hospital data showing that in 2019 alone, around 1,100 people were stabbed, which is the equivalent to around three people per day. Now, we have to remember that these are the official numbers from the NHS. I've seen some people in the comments trying to say that that report must have been fake based on those numbers. But as you can see here, the numbers don't lie, and this is extremely alarming. Of course, we never get to see the non-fatal stabbing numbers, so it's quite interesting to see how bad the problem really is. But I want to know your guys' thoughts on this. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and give the video a like for more crime-related content like this. It's been me, Ape Honcho, and I'll see you in the next one.